Greetings, I'm Solid Skelly, and it's a bit loud. Welcome back to Silent Hill Shattered Memories. We finally entered the Enchantment Under the Sea dance for the school reunion, and, uh... Well, we're gonna be meeting a new character here. And this is somebody who is a textbook example of somebody who peaks in high school. Yeah. As you can probably tell by my embittered rants last time, yeah, I don't really look back fondly on my high school years, or so my teenage years in general, really. I'm thankfully past that, but then you get people like Michelle Valdez, who... Well, uh, let's just say they're pretty dumb by high school. Uh, it's actually kind of incredibly tragic, really. And I mean, if there was ever a great metaphorical representation of that, I'd say Shadow Memories does it justice, but uh... To put things on a bit of a positive note for a second before we get completely depressing, uh... Kate Higgins has a lovely singing voice. And uh, it is also important to note that there are two different versions of this song you can get, one which is by a piano, and the other which is the techno mix that you're seeing here. Again, I'll, I'll let you listen to the last little bit of it, because this is some beautiful stuff. I... I didn't want to stop you, but I'm, uh, I'm looking for the shelter. You're not here for the reunion? No. <laughs> Some party. Me and a guy who isn't even supposed to be here. Catch. <clears throat> Thanks. Now, as you can see, uh, sections like this are also where you can basically influence the protagonist's psyche, which, uh... Hmm... Wonder what anything I'm trying to go for. Ah, uh, that's that Harry Mason. Always has his mind on the job. Or, one job anyway. That he's, uh, hoping Michelle will do for him. But, uh, yeah, enough crass jokes aside. We're just pretty much just getting to grips, and, uh, apparently, according to Michelle, there was a Cheryl Mason who once attended this school. Which you can tell, because if you look at any of those other photos, they're basically, like, uh, realistic pictures, probably from the developers and family and shit. Whereas, uh, Cheryl here, well, she looks like a character model, and there's like a mixture between, I guess, what Cheryl would have looked like if she got older, mixed with a bit of Heather Mason. Uh, particularly with the eyes, where it looks like she was incredibly tired, uh, for whatever reason. I don't know, Heather and Silent Hill 3 always looked like she needed a bit of sleep. But alas, it's off to the school office we go. Do -do 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 -do. The principal's office? Yep. Locked. But... With a little persuasion. You're breaking into the principal's office? I don't see any hall monitors. Evening, Mrs. Albright. You cow. Is she still around? I remember her. She was when I graduated. I think she'll be here until someone drives a stake through her cold secretarial heart. Ah, yes, I knew it. My nine-year-old self was always thinking that about school officials and their meddlesome ruels. The PC. All the school records are on it. Students used to hack it to fix their grades. Hey, I was good at school. Principal Fisher was obsessed with changing his passwords. And we're hacking into his PC to... See if you can pull up the records for Cheryl Mason. See if she's your daughter. Prove me wrong. If I do, we get out of here? Sure. Take your time. I'm just gonna text my boyfriend to find out where the hell he is. So, that is Michelle. Seems like a... well, again, I guess to go into this a little bit more, again, much in the same vein as Dahlia and, uh... I was about to spoil the character there, uh, but much in the same vein as, uh, Sybil. Her appearance can also change. Again, uh, what you're seeing here is Prom Queen, uh, which I guess is meant to be associated... Hmm, I'm actually kind of curious as, that, as to what that's meant to be associated with, because, again, the sexy version of Michelle, if you could even call it that, is one in a uh, red dress. Uh, you have Prong Queen here, which is, you know, very pink in tone, and, uh, again, I think it uh, kind of also influences her personality. Like, I believe you get a more sultry version if you get the red dress. I believe with this one, uh, you can kind of get, like, a mix of both. Like, you can, uh, you can, uh, can either get one that's, like, uh, very gentle and very... Uh, peaceful in nature in terms of Michelle's personality, or you can get the, uh... Hmm, I can't quite remember what the other one was, or at least what the, uh... What the wiki site labeled it as. 
I think it was called Outgoing, but yeah, and the third variant is called Plain Jane, which is basically Michelle in more of a conservative green dress kind of thing. And again, I think the gentle personality does sort of affect the lines of dialogue she has. Uh, like, I mean, yeah, like, you, you heard earlier with the whole dialogue of Evening, Mrs. Albright, you cow. I believe if you get the uh, green dress version, it's basically her saying, Sorry, Mrs. Albright. So, uh, yeah. Kind of changes how this character is, or how she is. But again, uh, in terms of what I ultimately think about Michelle, I'd, I'd say she probably fits more within the realm of uh, prom queen, because... Well, given a certain ending that she features in, which, uh, well, you could, for those who've played the game, probably oh so subtly know which is the one I'm trying to go for. Yeah, uh, I think Prom Queen kind of suits Michelle's character the best, really. I know, and I, I think the personality type you also get is outgoing. Again, like, the, the way in which personality types really happen, I think it's meant to be associated with one specific costume. Or at least that's how it is in the case of uh, Sybil Bennett, who usually has, you know, the sultry version, which is based on the Silent Hill 1 outfit. Uh, the... Uh, hmm, how do I put the other one? Uh, the Mariska Hagate one. I'd say that's probably more of the... Uh, fucking... I, just, I guess just the average person. And then you have the SWAT Officer Sybil, which is basically, you know, outwardly aggressive. So, I mean, I don't know if that was meant to be more of a subtler inclination as to how characters and personalities react, or if it was uh, something that they wanted to simplify because Shadow Memories was much more cut down than what uh, Silent Hill Cold Heart was, in was initially going to be, which is a bit of a story in and of itself that I might discuss uh, as we go a little bit more onwards, but we have a puzzle to solve here. Anyway, we're trying to hack into the school records, which uh, can be done in a variety of ways, and this is probably one of the few puzzles that changes the most depending on uh, your choices here. Like, again, you have to pick out a star sign, you can uh, pick out his favourite pieces of literature, you can call his ex-wife, which we're going to be hearing in a little bit. Again, the questions do vary depending on uh, your choices here, so... Again, incentivizes repeat playthroughs in terms of puzzles. Now then, let's go and check up on uh, Herman 45's ex-wife. Oh yeah. Hi, this is Valerie. Please leave a message, and I'll get back to you. If this is Herman, please stop calling. I'm not ready to talk yet. Hmm, seems to be an ongoing theme about troubled marriages. Very interesting. <laughs> Why the hell do I keep doing that? Is it gonna be another fucking running gag or some shit? Ugh, whatever. But anyway, like, uh, the questions do vary, and you can also find a very sneaky reference to Silent Hill 3 if you look over onto his bookshelf. Again, you'll find, uh, the, th uh, the couple of volumes of William Shakespeare, actually, which were used in the, uh, Silent Hill 3 bookstore puzzle. And, uh, for whatever reason, he also has a book on Fidel Castro, which is, uh, hmm, curious. You, uh, teaching the kids some communist values there, Herman? Herman 65 or 45, you know, betraying your nation to those, uh, comrade bastards. I should probably shut up before I cause a shitstorm in the comment section because Jesus Christ. Uh, flame wars getting ignited is an all too common occurrence. Anyway, let's talk about a uh, racket ball. I, I will say though, like, you can actually get some pretty funny variant messages, like, uh, again, with the whole Valerie thing. You know, he can have one of the questions be, like, what's the name of my bitch of an ex-wife? Uh, I wasted five years to major in geology. So again, you know, uh, creative and unique uh, questions that you can see on returning playthroughs. Again, like, I mean, I, c I keep on saying this, but Silent Hill Shadow Memories is a game that absolutely revels in its replay value, and again, if this game clicks with you, you're gonna be in for a great time here. That being said, though, uh... Well, I suppose I'm not really doing it too much justice, but I mean, regardless of such. Uh, also, for whatever reason, I swear to god the PC looks like an Xbox 360, and uh, this goes for all versions, like, I mean... I guess some PCs would look like that, but... I don't know if... Especially mid-2000s PCs, actually, but... At the same time, though, that looks uh, very specific, which makes me wonder... Uh, was someone who, was someone who shut up memories initially going to get an Xbox 360 port at some point? Uh, I mean, it might have, it might have been, and that could have been a sneaky reference, kind of like in the same way how uh, Resident Evil Remake actually had, um, like one of the, like one of the printing machines actually had uh, the printers disguised as GameCubes, 
I can't quite remember if they changed that for some of the uh, HD versions, which were released like much later on, but... You know, I always love sneaky hidden references like that, like, um... Uh, I th what other game was it? I'm trying to remember. Uh, nothing's come to mind, I was thinking of something completely unrelated. And, uh, yeah, this is definitely a lot easier to use than the... Actually, no, I'm, I'm kind of curious, actually, was this also going to get a PC port at some point? Because this seems more, uh, applicable towards that than it does the PS2 or Wii controls, which is, uh, shit. Yeah, I don't th <laughs> Like, I mean, if I was to recommend a version of Shadow Memories, or at least one that I think is a little bit more worth it for your buck, I'd just recommend, honestly, the PS2 version. Because, I mean, I've seen footage of the Wii version, and the waggle controls don't seem particularly accurate, especially when you're trying to do uh, very precise motions. Again, I'm not trying to completely downplay the Wii entirely, but... Uh, some things fly and some things don't, and uh, that is one of them. I'm supposed to talk about things in terms of plot, the fact that Cheryl is all grown up, the fact that she uh, seems to have a bit of a record with the school. I think we all know where this is headed. Or do we? Da -da -da. All the pieces are jacking our memory. We gotta find it. Harry has to find it. Because if he doesn't, he will be lost in darkness. Forever. Well, less lost in darkness and more so lost in the snow, because Harry didn't think to bring a snow shovel with him on this adventure. I, uh, I ain't got much else to see. So I guess in uh, the meantime, I guess I'll probably just talk about... Uh, hmm. Don't really have anything at the moment. Well, I suppose, if nothing else, I could also uh, use this as a bit of a caveat to say... Uh, well, consider this practice for the Silent Hill Shadow Memories review, because uh, there is a lot to talk about, and, well, as you can see by my, uh, an upcoming performance in the other world, yeah, it's very easy to get lost in some of these levels. <sighs> Sorry about that, I was just taking a drink of Pepsi. But, like, I mean, again, at the risk of spoiling things, I honestly thought I wouldn't have as much trouble with the other world sequences in this game, but, uh... Good lord, I found myself getting lost quite a bit. I don't know whether that, I don't know whether that's because I haven't played the game enough, or yeah, there is something inherent to the game's design. But sweet crispy Jesus, it's uh. Well, I mean, it is confusing. Also, I believe they like again. Maybe that's maybe this is the size of my editor or my eyes playing tricks on me. But I swear to God. You know, the password itself also changes, because like, I swear to God I've had games where I've where that's been Hermit in 65 rather than Hermit 45. Uh, maybe that's a playthrough specific thing, but I can't really say for certain. Also, uh, not to say anything, but I'm pretty sure it isn't this easy to hack into school computers. Or at least, uh, as far as I know anyway. Maybe they got a bit better at that when I was in high school. Anyway, cutscene time. Shit. You break it? It just froze on me. It is her. It is her. We moved? You don't remember because of the accident? Simmons Street. It's not a great neighborhood. Why would we move there? I guess the cop was right. My ID was old. That wasn't my house. What else did I forget? There's a phone number. Why don't you call it? I will. There's no reception. I'll be outside. Good luck. Yes? Cheryl? No, Dahlia. You want me to find her? Who's calling? It's her father, Harry Mason. Is she okay? Harry? Is she okay? Who the hell do you think you are? Sorry? What's the... Leave me alone! <laughs> Oh no, our bitch of an ex-wife has frozen us out, just like in the real world! <laughs> yeah, here we go again. I will say that this is actually one of the more confusing other world layouts. Uh, it's a, hmm, I'd say it's either this one or it's the one in the, uh, uh, the one coming next, actually. But again, this is just part one of this other world sequence. We have an entire s and again, like, the initial runaway segments, even though I do die here, that isn't the bullshit part. What I am going to be talking about is what's coming, what you'll see at the end of the part, and what will be the main focus next time. 
Good lord, I'm not looking forward to that because, uh, Christ. But yeah, it's, it's either this one or the next other word sequence that is probably my most hated one because, I mean, again, to talk about positives for a second, again, despite the fact that this is just slicked with ice and, you know, doesn't really change too much, unlike previous Silent Hill games which usually had a more abstract design combined with the whole blood and rust sort of aesthetic, like, I mean, I will say that, like, when you get outside and you see some of the more warped locales, this icy other world can look pretty uh, good, provided you don't have uh, raw shocks latching onto your body. And again, like, I mean, in terms of design elements, I can say that Silent Hill Shadow Memories really does stand out as a game. Like, that over there, like, seeing goalposts just overturned, like, the ice is beginning to melt and thaw out as it floats off to sea. Again, like, uh, in terms of capturing the very dreamlike sort of aesthetic that Silent Hill was known for, I think it succeeds quite well, but, uh, yeah, it's a shame you can't really stand around and smell the roses because we have raw shocks that are starting to look pretty different. Very interesting. <laughs> but also very dangerous. <laughs> no! And, uh, yeah. Like, I mean, while you can tank a few hits here and there, which, you know, you'd have to if you wanted to get anywhere, this is uh, a bit of a problem in the sense that the raw shocks can end up being more annoying than they are frightening. I mean, generally speaking, unless, of course, you are under used to horror games, because, again, you know, so keeping in mind that Silent Hill Shadow Memories was meant to appeal to the casual gamer as opposed to survival horror badasses who can complete, you know, games like Silent Hill with all ten stars and, uh, you know, basically be cool like that. The same can't really be said for Shadow Memories, and the raw shocks in particular well, again, as you're seeing, they basically just give you a hug. And when you have the flare and distract them with the power of light, well, and uh, fire, I guess, yeah, it uh, doesn't really work on them. Now, again, given the game's lack of combat focus, you would think that Harry could just get the idea to stab them with a flare, but uh, no, he never gets the idea, and it's kind of baffling, really, because, like, I mean, I know it was inbuilt to the game's design, but at the same time, though, like, he knows this is a multiple occurrence thing, and you would have thought he would have gotten the idea to at least. I don't know, maybe jab one of them to keep them down temporarily? I suppose, uh, again, I think I might have brought it up before, but I think, like, the Forbidden Siren methodology of, you know, the raw shocks are invincible, they will hunt you down because, you know, they want to stop Harry from reaching the truth. And I think maybe taking them down temporarily, whether through, uh, you know, traps that you can use to collapse onto them, or, like, I don't know, maybe using the flare to stab them and temporarily stop them that way, I think that would have been a much more efficient way of keeping the raw shocks off your back, at least until you could at least get yourself a bit of distance. And this is something that I think is especially prevalent in the upcoming segment, uh, next part, because... Well, again, once you start getting lost, and again, I think I did also bring up this sort of mentality in Silent Hill 3, again, when you're just trying to beat the game, what starts off as something that you start thinking, oh god, this is so scary, I don't want to face these creatures, eventually becomes, I don't want to face these creatures because I'm severely fucking annoyed and I don't want to deal with this anymore. And, you know, to that effect, there is a bit of dissonance where horror games, I'd say, more than any other genre, rely on you to be very, you know, intuitive and, I guess, subtly... I guess uh, having the... Excuse me. I guess having the ability to subtly motion the player along with efficient game design that tells them what they need to do without being directly told uh, with, you know, like, the Spidey Compass or the Compass from Enter the Matrix or whatever. And I mean, uh, especially with some things that are upcoming, I don't know, I think this could have used uh, Shadow Memory 2 to really flesh out some of the game design aspects here, as well as a few, as well as a few quality of life improvements. Like, I mean, as you saw right there with the uh, little cupboard that Harry could hide in, yeah, much in the same vein as uh, the Amy segment uh, sections from Sonic Adventure, it's useless. The raw shocks will find you anyway, they'll drag you out kicking and screaming, and uh, it's not going to be a very fun time. <laughs> Again, as I keep on saying, as far as intuitive level design goes, Shadow Memories doesn't really have a lot of that. Like, I mean, you can tell what doors are open by the fact that they have like these bright blue lights indicating where to go, which, again, is important. But at the same time, though, in terms of actually getting you to groups on where you have to go, it doesn't really do a very good job because, again, you're still running around in circles, the environment still looks very cut and paste, and without significant set pieces to really alert you that, okay, there's something here. And, again, it's difficult to discern what's just general art design from uh, where you need to go from a gameplay perspective. Like, I mean, you saw the destroyed goals, uh, the footy goals, like, right before there. 
But again, you don't know if that's a place you've been before, some place that you need to go, or anything really. So ultimately, you're just sort of left trying to pick up the pieces and trying to figure out where the hell to go. And again, that's what leads to you running around in circles, running around in circles. I mean, admittedly, part of this might be my fault, or uh, maybe my sense of direction at this game is kind of terrible, but... I, I, I don't know, like, I mean, there are a lot of subtle tricks that I think... Again, and I hate to say this because everybody fucking says it, that I think Team Silent were excellent at putting in so that they could subtly motion players to know where to go by camera angle change. And I think something like that would have quite easily have helped, like, I don't know, maybe... Like, some recognisable iconography that would say, the exit is over here without being blatantly obvious, or... I don't know, camera angle change that goes, oh, look through here, I have to go through the door. Stuff like that really does help a lot, and, uh... Well, I mean, I will say that you will begin to see what is fundamentally uh, broken about the game's otherworld design, because uh, right after this part, and as we'll be seeing with the concluding message, well, yeah, you're going to be dying, wink wink, uh, once you find out what we have to do, because yes, this otherworld section actually has missions. Well, by that I mean one mission, but it is one that's quite annoying, because, uh, yeah, it wants you to explore around and do a few things. Problem is, the raw shocks are there. And I think we can see where this is headed. And I completely fucked up my catchphrase, but fuck it, we're out of time for today, so I'm still with a scully, keep a new medal, and I will see you next time on the Shadow Memories commentary. Bye bye Damn it! The door shut behind you. I guess you're on your own. Show me some balls, okay? They're inside, so just go find them and get photos. Gonna nail that sleazy bastard, right? I'll try and get the doors open. Get moving!